We're going to review some of the material for exam two. Uh, some of the content um, is going to be here in the process control course. And uh, what we're going to do is go down to class number 23. Okay, so the first thing we'll find is a practice exam review sheet. Now this is uh, the material that we covered for chapters two through seven of our um, of this uh, section for the exam and so you can see the list of topics that we've covered and then uh, we'll also open up this practice exam as well okay so this is the practice exam that we'll be using and in this video we'll just go ahead and solve uh, problem number one for this okay so if you scroll down you'll be able to see uh, problem number one okay so um, let's go down and uh, so the, the problem states, uh, by inspection, determine which of the following process models can be approximated reasonably accurately by a first order plus dead time, or time delay, FOPDT, or, FOP, or FOPTD model. Uh, for each acceptable case, calculate the approximate uh, process gain, KP, the process time constant, tau P, and the process dead time, theta P. Okay, so um, there's all, there are also um, graphs that correspond to these. Okay, so we have A right here, and then we have the corresponding graph for A right here. Okay, so let's just look graphically at some of these and see which ones we think we can approximate uh, reasonably well. Okay, so A and B. Um, you know, if I, if I just drew an FOPDT model, I'd say that these... I could approximate uh, reasonably well. Uh, same with this one. Okay. And uh, this one looks a little bit suspicious. Okay. There's quite a bit of overshoot here. Um, and uh, so I'm going to say that this one we can't approximate well. So that is D uh, that we cannot approximate with an FOPDT model. But uh, E looks okay as well. Okay. So let's just go ahead and throw out um, D. We'll say. Uh, can't uh, be reasonably uh, approximated. Okay, so let's go on to uh, to A. So we know that A, B, C, and E can reasonably be approximated just from the graph. You know, looking at them graphically. Okay, so we're going to use two approaches here. One is a Taylor series. Okay, so Taylor series, we had e to the uh, theta s is approximately, and then 1 plus theta s. We're just going to take the first two terms of that series, and so we're going to go back uh, this way. Okay, so we have 1 plus theta s, and then we're going to go back to e to the uh, theta s. Okay, so that's Taylor series. We're also going to use um, an approach... Um, by Skogestad as well. Okay, so Skogestad's rule is very similar to that, but you take and, and leave the dominant pr process time constant, so the one that has the highest tau value, okay, um, and these two, in this case, they're tied, and then the um, you take the next highest tau value, and you split this, sending half of it into the dominant time constant, and then half of it will become the new uh, process dead time. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and use Taylor series and also Skogestad's rule as well. Okay, so Taylor series, um, let's go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger. And uh, Taylor series, remember, is e to the uh, theta s equals, I'll just write this as theta s plus 1. Okay, so um, Taylor series, I'm going to have k divided by 10 s plus 1 and leave the dominant time constant there okay they're tied in this case but then I'm going to approximate this as e to the 10 s and then that's going to equal k divided by 10 uh, s plus 1 and then e to the negative 10 s okay so that's Taylor series approximation and then let's do Skogestad's rule as well Okay, and that's going to be 15 s plus 1 e to the minus 5 s. Okay, so that is um, method 1, and that's Taylor 
series and then method uh, 2 we'll say that scogistads rule okay so we'll use scogistads rule to convert that okay um, and let's just actually open up MATLAB as we go through these and just see how this approximation um, looks um, you know for the k value I didn't give you a k value but let's just assume that's one uh, for these these cases um, okay so I'm gonna open up MATLAB and uh, let me just type s equals my my uh, transfer function and um, I'm just gonna do my original g is gonna be 1 divided by 10 times s plus 1 and I'll do squared on that okay so I have my overall process time uh, my overall process transfer function and I'll give it a step of 1 with this step function and then uh, let's see the response okay so there's the response of the original um, t uh, transfer function and um, let's go ahead and just move this over just to the side right here and uh, finish the rest of these so I'm going to have my first approximation um, I'll say this is my uh, Taylor series and um, so let's just do 1 divided by 10 times s plus 1 um, times the 10 second time delay. Okay, so I'll hold on to that prior plot and then step the uh, g1 as well. Okay, so there's my my next response. And uh, let me do my Skogestad's rule as well. Okay, so this is going to be 1 um, divided by... 15 times s plus 1 and then with the 5 second delay instead of the 10 second delay and then I'll step uh, g2 as well okay so you can see the red um, does a little bit better job than the uh, Taylor series um, so Skogasas method um, is a little bit better and I'll make this just a little bit bigger so you can see it um, so the red line approximates the blue line the original function just a little bit better Okay, so there's our FOPDT approximation, um, and so we'll go ahead and use, uh, you know, say that this one's probably the best one. Okay, so let's go on down to our next one now. Now we do have, we don't have any that are tied, we do have a dominant time constant, so that's one we'll, we'll leave there. But let's use, um, you know, method one, our Taylor series first, and uh, that is going to be, you know, the K uh, 10 S plus one, and then I'm going to have e to the 8s and e to the 1s. Okay, so this is going to be e to the 9s, and then I'm going to bring it into the numerator. Okay, so I have 10s plus 1, e to the negative 9s. Now that was a Taylor series approximation. And let's also use a Skogas as mo uh, method. Okay, so half of this is going to go into the time constant, and half will go into the time delay and so I'll have k divided by 14 s plus 1 and then I'm going to have a time delay of 5 okay again let's go back to MATLAB and just try these out um, we'll look at the original transfer function and then we'll compare the two um, that we see there okay so I'll go ahead and just um, define my new g value Okay, and that is going to be uh, 1, in this case I'll just assume k is 1, and then uh, 10 times um, s plus 1 times 8 times s plus 1 times s plus 1. Okay, and then I will hold off on that plot, and let's go ahead and step uh, g. Okay, and then we'll bring back, um, let's bring back our plot there, just so we can see. Okay, so uh, we held off on the plot, um, so that we can plot something new over that, and then I'll hold on to that plot, and I'll do G1 now. So this is our uh, Taylor series approximation, 1 divided by 10 times S plus 1, um, times, um, okay, so then we're going to have 9 uh, time delay. Okay, and I'll also go ahead and do my uh, Skogasad's rule as well. So 1 divided by 14 times s plus 1. Um, and then I'll have the 5 second time delay. 
Okay, so we'll go ahead and step uh, G1. Okay, so there's the Taylor series approximation, and then we'll go ahead and step G2 as well. Okay, so the red is Skogasev's rule, and then the green is the Taylor series approximation. So there we have some reasonable approximations to the original uh, transfer function. Okay, again, maybe Skogasev's rule is a little bit better in, uh, in that one as well. So I'll go ahead and put a box around that. Okay, so we're just going to go through uh, the rest of these. I won't uh, plot them in MATLAB, but one thing to consider about this is it's a little bit tricky because it does, isn't in the time constant form. So I'm going to multiply by 2 to the 5th on the numerator and 2 to the 5th in the denominator and get that back into the tau form, okay, um, the time constant form. So that's going to be 10s plus 1, and then I'm going to have... 2s plus 1 to the fifth, that's going to be 32. Okay, so in this case, we're going to have our gain is going to be 32 times k. That's our kp value. Um, okay, and let's go ahead and do Taylor series approximation. Okay, so I'm going to have, that's going to be 32 times k divided by 10s plus 1 and then I'm going to have e to the minus 10s. Okay, and then with Skogestad's rule, um, we'll do uh, 11s plus 1. Okay, so a half of the next uh, dominant time constant, which was 2, goes here in the, uh, in the tau p value, and then I'm going to have just one less there. Okay, so there's Skogestad's rule, and there is um, there's the Taylor series. So make sure when you're we're writing these that we put them back into the standard form. Okay, so this is an FOPDT form. And so we can correlate what's in the numerator um, to KP, what's at this location as tau P, and then uh, the time delay is theta P. Okay, so in this case, KP equals 32 times K, and tau P equals 11 and then uh, theta p equals 9. Okay, so these two have to be greater than or equal to 0 because they're units of time and uh, this one's going to have units of delta output divided by delta input. Okay, um, so let's go back to the last one. Okay, so we said that d can't be uh, reasonably approximated. Let's go to our, back to our last one. Now this one we actually have to factor um, in order to be able to um, uh, to apply Skogas adds or Taylor series approximation. So let's go ahead and, um, you know, one way to do that is just to use the quadratic formula on this. And so I'm going to have my two root x equals negative 11 plus my square root 11 squared minus 4 times 10 times 1, 4 times a times c, divided by 2a which is uh, 20 in the denominator. Okay, and then that will be negative 11 um, plus or minus, and, and then we're going to have square root of 121 minus 40 divided by 20, so that's negative 11. Now this becomes 81 here in the square root. So that's going to be plus or minus 9 divided by 20. Okay, so we have... Um, two roots for this. We have um, negative one and we have, um, let's see, one tenth. Okay, so those are our two roots. Um, so this is actually going to be equal to, when I factor this, this is going to be 10s plus one um, and then I'm going to have s plus one. Okay, so uh, same denominator as we saw here, okay, but um, let's go ahead and apply Taylor series approximation. Okay, just a, a time delay of one, and then let's do Skogestad's rule as well. Okay, so we have Taylor series, and then we have Skogestad's, um, so that's going to be 
s plus 1 e to the minus 0 0.5 s. Okay, so um, for each of these, we came up with a Taylor series approximation um, and uh, using Skogaset's rule uh, to come up with an FOPDT uh, model, um, first order plus dead time or first order plus time delay. And there we can see the plots of those as well. Um, in MATLAB, um, we also generated the comparisons just to show what this approximation looked like. So um, just as a final note, why would we want to do this? Why would we want to take a higher order system like is shown here and generate an FOPDT model? Well, a lot of the PID tuning parameters um, like ITAE or IMC, um, they request that you have the KP, uh, tau P, and theta P from an FOPDT model in order to be able to generate KC, tau I, and tau D tuning parameters uh, for PID uh, controllers. Okay, so what we did is we showed how to take a higher order uh, process transfer function and relate it to these tuning parameters or to the uh, process um, FOPDT model so that we can obtain the PID tuning parameters.